Welcome to our Lake Point Kids Online Family Experience. I'm Ms. Rachel, and it's great to have you here with me today. Oops, oh. Sorry about that, friends. I'll have to call them back later. Phones are pretty neat, aren't they? I mean, you can make phone calls, send messages, write notes, take pictures, look at a calendar, use the calculator, check the weather, order food, and like a million other things thanks to a phone. But that wasn't always the case. People had to connect very differently 150 years ago. They had to write a letter or send a telegram or go visit someone in person if they wanted to connect. That all began to change though when the very first telephone was created. Now, if you're at Lake Point Kids on site with us today, you've got a chalkboard and some chalk in front of you. If you're at home, no worries, you can just do this activity verbally. All right, I'm gonna take you now on a brief journey of the history of the telephone. Now, the phone was invented in 1876 by a man named what? A. Alexander Graham Bell, B. James Milton Telemark, or C. Henry K. Carter. Write down the letter you think is correct. All right, if you guessed A, Alexander Graham Bell, then you are right. Now, this phone, though, is perhaps not what you're imagining. The first phone was a liquid transmitter, and this is what it looked like. Now, what do you think the very first words ever spoken on that telephone were? Mr. Bell spoke them to his assistant. Were they? A, please bring me some lunch. B, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. Or C, what's the date again today? Write down your answer, either A, B, or C. The correct answer is B. Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. Well, many improvements and changes were obviously made to the phone over the years. Next came the hand crank wall phone, often found in general stores for the community to use. People had to talk to an operator who would connect their calls for them. Then came the candlestick phone, followed by the cradle electric phone. That was changed to a rotary desk phone and later on a touch tone phone. After that was a cordless phone, and then came the mobile phone or the cell phone. Now guess how much the very first cell phone weighed. Was it A, half a pound, B, one pound, or C, over two pounds? Well, the answer is C. The very first cell phone weighed over two pounds. I don't think it would have fit very well in your pocket. I'm glad people kept improving on the phone and making it what it is today. And who knows what the phone will be like in the future. Phones have changed a lot over the years, but the main purpose of the phone hasn't. The main goal of a phone is to help people stay connected. But you know what else helps people stay connected to each other? It's not an object you can hold in your phone. It's an attitude you can have towards people. Peace. Proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. I'll count to three and we can say this together. One, two, three. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. If you don't have peace in your relationships, you won't be well connected to people. They will steer clear of you because who wants to be around someone who is always insisting they're right or always wanting their way and just trying to pick fights? Nobody wants that and even the Bible confirms it. If possible, live at peace with everyone. Do that as much as you can. Romans 12, verse 18, nerve. You can't guarantee peace, but you can do things to try to help bring peace. All right, if you're at home today, try saying the verse while marching, while stomping, and while karate kicking. If you're at Lake Point on site, then turn your attention to the stage. So peace, what is that again? Well, peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. And our bottom line or focus point of today is you can help others make peace. Let's say it together. One, two, three. You can help others make peace. Oh, whoops. Oh, I better take this friends. Why do that? Why don't you check out and see what John and Brandon are up to today. <laughs> That's amazing. Hello? Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can't believe how fast sound travels along string. Can you believe it? Did I ever tell you about the time I built a string can telephone using fishing line? It didn't work as well. 
What was the difference? I caught a fish. Oh, uh, it's a miracle. A miracle. Hey, do you have any gum? Sure do. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. I, you're welcome! I know, I can open mine wider. <laughs> oh, hey everybody, welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and as always, we're excited to have you with us today. That's right, today is going to be Electric. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Oh, shocking. Uh, enlightening. Uh, 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 voltaic. Nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All of those adjectives will make a lot more sense once you meet our very special guest. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Hi. Hey, come on in. Whoa. Yeah, have yeah, a seat. yeah. Please do. Please do. Uh, Here you go. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so tell us who you are and what you know. Uh, my name is Sparky, and I know all about electricity and power lines. Hey. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Whew, no worries. No, just a little wake up call. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So uh, you work on the power lines? Yep, all over town. Oh. Gotta keep everybody connected, you know? Mm hmm. So we definitely appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, just last week, a bunch of birds attack a line, and 14 houses lost power until I climbed up there and got the birds off. Mm. You know, I told them, That's bird for, get off of there, these people need power. Wow. You know, they flew away pretty quickly, and I uh, fixed the line right up. Well, effective. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Four seconds off the clock! Shannon got the ball! He goes for three from the corner! So yeah, birds can be a menace to power lines. What just happened? Hmm? You, yeah, are you listening to the game with earbuds or something? Oh, did I pick up a radio station again? Uh. <laughs> Pitfalls of the job. Oh, that's hmm. odd. Yeah, but oddly convenient. Hey, go Flapjack! Hey! Hey, <laughs> Flapjack! So, uh, Sparky, what's your favorite thing about your job? Hmm, lots of things. I like the adventure of being up high, getting a sky view of the city, mm. knowing all the intricacies of how electricity works. I mean, the lines have to be connected just right. Mm -hmm. That was Mel, Solomon, and Greg with their chart top and holiday classic. There's a squirrel in my Christmas tree. You know what that sound means. The 27th caller wins two tickets to the Monster Golf Cart Derby in Sheboygan this Thursday. That's five, 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 four, two. Yep, lots of things I like about the job. What? Uh, five, 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 four, two. Hmm? Four, two, what? Uh, your job is so important. I mean, without you, we wouldn't be able to turn on the lights oh. or, or, or use the internet. Mm. Yeah, or be able to keep my grandmother's Christmas fruitcake preserved all year long. We freeze a year's supply every December. That would be an unfortunate loss in a power outage. Oh, you got that right. Oh, it's not gonna go out, is it? No, oh, I can't promise anything. But if it does go out, you, know, you can count on me and my team to fix it. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know how much that means to me or my grandmother. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's my favorite part of the job. I mean, people get scared or upset when the power goes out. They feel powerless. Sounds about right. But I get the chance to bring them peace again by turning the power back on. Mm. Yeah. Cool. <gasps> Too many tacos Tuesday. Is that tumbling and turning in your tummy tiresome? Let's face it, you've got indigestion. People need to feel peace, you know? I do. What a satisfying job you have yeah. with unusual side effects. <laughs> but you bring light to people's darkness in more ways than one. Yeah. Well, that's how I like to conduct my business. Because you can, you conduct electricity. Oh! No! Yeah. Oh, conduct! <laughs> yeah. Of course. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, it's been great having you on the show. You want to stick around for a little while? Oh, I won't resist. Okay. okay. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Story before the story. 
Today, we're in the book of 1 Samuel, which tells us the story of the first kings of Israel. Saul, the first king over the Israelites, did not listen to God. So God instructed the prophet Samuel to anoint a young shepherd, David, to be the next king after Saul. After David fought the Philistine Goliath, Saul made David a leader in the army. David had so much success that all the people loved him. But Saul became jealous and tried to hurt David, who fled to the wilderness. But he wasn't alone. A group of loyal men joined him. While on the run from Saul, David and his men camped out in the desert of Paran for a time. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, 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 everyone. A very rich man named Nabal lived in Carmel, near the desert of Paran. He had 1,000 goats and 3,000 sheep, and he also had a bad attitude. This is rubbish. Take it away. Uh, yes, master. Nabal's wife, Abigail, however, was wise and kind. Never mind him. You did nothing wrong. Now, it just so happened that David and his men were camped out near Nabal's flocks of sheep. The wilderness was dangerous territory where thieves and robbers often attacked. But David and his men kept Nabal's shepherds and flocks safe. Stop right there. While David stayed there, not a single one of Nabal's sheep was hurt or stolen. And at the end of the season, it was time to shear the wool off the sheep. This was a festive time for everyone. Nabal called for a big party to celebrate his success. David heard about the shearing and knew that he and his men had helped Nabal to be successful by protecting his sheep. So David decided to ask Nabal to share food and supplies with his men. Go up to Nabal at Carmel. Greet him for me. Say to him, may you live a long time. May everything go well with you and your family. David sent several of his men with this greeting and a request. But if they expected a warm welcome, ugh, they were mistaken. David says, when your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. Nothing that belonged to them was stolen. So please be kind to my men. Please give us whatever food you can find. Instead of listening to reason, Nabal roared. Who is this David? Many servants are running away from their masters these days. Why should I give food to men who come from who knows where? When David's men returned with this response, David was furious. Each of you put on your swords. David gathered 400 men to march to Nabal's home. It seemed that no one could stop the coming explosion between David's angry army and the stubborn Nabal. Uh, that is, until Abigail heard what was happening. David sent some messengers to our master, but Nabal shouted at them. David's men were very good to us. They kept us safe. Now horrible trouble is coming. Please see what you can do. Don't worry, I have a plan. Abigail directed her servants to load up donkeys. Let's see. Bread, raisins, figs, sheep. Well done. You go ahead, I'll follow you. Abigail sent the donkeys ahead with gifts for David. As she rode her donkey down the mountain, she could see David's men entering the valley from the other side. Everything we've done hasn't been worth a thing. I watched over that fellow's property in the desert, but he has paid me back evil for good. Now I'll make him pay. Look, sir, there's a whole train of donkeys ahead. David may have been surprised by all of these donkeys bringing gifts of food, but he must have been shocked when Abigail showed up behind them. Who is this woman? She's the wife of the man who insulted you. Let me take the blame myself. Please don't pay any attention to my husband, Nabal. His name means foolish person, and that's exactly what he is. I'm listening. Sir, the Lord has kept you from using your own hands to get even. I've brought a gift for you and the men who follow you. The Lord will appoint you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have to worry about how you got even. The Lord will give you success. When that happens, Please, remember me. Ah, the Lord has sent you today to find me. May the Lord bless you for what you have done. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. Praise God. Go home in peace. I've heard your words. I'll do what you've asked. 
Abigail faced a difficult situation. She knew she couldn't make Nabal listen, so she chose to go to David instead. She stepped up with courage and creativity and stopped what would have been a terrible fight. The end. Another radio station? Nope. I just, I just thought of a question. Oh, uh, oh, well then, reveal the question. How can you be a peacemaker? Yeah, yeah, life is full of opportunities to help people make peace. Yeah, maybe, maybe your friends or siblings are upset with one another and, and you can help them understand each other's point of view. Or when someone has a hard day, you can encourage them that everything will be okay. Yeah, sometimes you might feel like you don't know what to do, but remember, Jesus is full of peace and he can help you bring that peace to others. That's right, talk it out. How can you be a peacemaker? I'm Brandon. I'm Sparky. I'm John, and this was the So and So Show. Hey, great show, Sparky. Thank you, John. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> Gonna have to charge you for that one. <laughs> $55. Abigail kept her cool and was able to find a peaceful solution to a big problem. Like Abigail, you can help others keep the peace when they don't see eye to eye. Like, let's say two of your friends are fighting over which movie to watch. Try suggesting a different movie the three of you have enjoyed before, or maybe an entirely different activity. Or maybe your friends get really intense when playing basketball, so you could help keep the peace by being laid back, helping people laugh, and reminding them it's just a game. But what if your best efforts don't work and people are refusing to act peacefully? Well then go get a grown up to help. The most amazing peacemaker of all was born into David's family line about a thousand years later. Who was it? Jesus. Jesus made a way for us to be in a relationship with God, no matter who we are or what we've done. Because of Jesus, we can have peace with God and that's where true peace starts. When we've got peace with God, then we can help others make peace. It's time to bring it home now with your small group time, so long as your parent listened to today's instructions. First, how can you be a peacemaker? What are things that you can do or say, or not do and not say, to help influence others towards peace? Now press pause, enjoy discussion, and then come back for the second set of instructions. Next, play a game of telephone. Get together with another person or two or three and whisper something into the first person's ear. Then they will whisper that same thing to the next person who will whisper it to the next person and the next. See if your message was communicated properly by the time it gets to the last person. Parents, now is the time to either scan the QR code on the screen or head over to the Lakepoint app to build our online connection card. Signing our guest book lets us know who is watching and helps us stay connected to you. It also allows you to sign up for our latest Lake Point initiatives and opportunities. So kids, while your parents are busy doing that, why don't you take a few selfies with a phone? your favorite Lake Point Kids online family experiences on our YouTube channel or on our Lake Point app in the family resources section. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. I'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Remember, you can help others make peace. <laughs>